All right, welcome back everybody. My name's Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. So today is gonna to be another one of those short housework days. Man, they've been happening a lot here lately. So I've already been doing some stuff this morning, knocking out things around the property, even had the guy come and work on the tractor from the John Deere dealership. Big shout out to them for sending that guy out there here so I don't have to carry everything back. He did some uh, recall work on just replacing a couple bolts on the loader arms. But today we're about the house. So, uh, got a few hours. I think I want to go ahead and continue to knock out. We've been doing porch electrical and lights. I've got to mount a couple wall sconces. I've got a special way that I'm going to mount lights up here. I'm going to show y'all. This should make it easy for trimming around. I'm going to do one inside the door down here, one inside right here. Also, I've got to come in here and button up and finish some uh, miscellaneous wiring. Like, I forgot to wire in one smoke detector that's out here in the uh, hall. So, I just got to run over and tie into that one just inside the room. Just some little oddball stuff like that. I'll take a quick look around and we'll knock out some other stuff as well. Um, the good news is the HVAC people are coming tomorrow. So we'll have a video out before long showing that. However, it's gonna take them more than one day to uh, you know, install everything. So I'm gonna take them way more than one day, I would imagine. So it may be a few days before I get you that video out. And uh, we'll talk about what else is coming up. I have got a lot to do coming next week. All right, so this is the kind of things that I can drive myself crazy with. I've already been thinking about these outside lights actually months ago, and I think I found something. So I purchased some of these, I even forget what they're called. They're just basically wall mounting plates. You can put these up and mount lamps on them. Um, I'm actually even gonna use some of these for outlets, uh, drilling holes through, coming inside. I use these for a lot of different things. But it has a cover that pops off the outside, a trim plate, you're left with a nailing flange and I can seal this up really nice for the penetration through the wall. The other nice thing about this is it has these circles in here that just so happens they're knockouts or cutouts for a four inch box. And this is your standard inch and a half box. It looks like if I were to figure out exactly where I want to mount the base of the light here on the wall, mount this here, run my wires in it, get this nice and sturdy. This will go right over it after I cut my little cutout or knockout and the box will sit perfectly flush with this. So it looks like it was intended and designed to work with an inch and a half box. So I'm going to trim this center knockout out. I've been looking at the style lights that we're probably going to go with. They're all very similar. I'm okay with the mount being here and the light hanging down a little. And I've got to determine where I'm going to put this up here. But uh, let's get this cut out with a razor knife. Sadly, I don't have a hole saw the proper size. For this, I have one that's a little bigger than this to come through walls or whatever else that I need to do.
All right, I'm sure there was a much better way to do that, but that works, I guess. I wish I had a, a hole saw this size. Okay, these are the type of things that I can literally drive myself crazy and spend an insanely long amount of time, wasted time on. How high do you mount the light? So I've just read online, everybody's recommending around 66 inches to the center of the light, which sounds so weird to me. Who would want an outside light where it's blinding you? That just seems crazy. I would think higher would be better. Up to 72, 72 inches, I'm saying. So let's look at some 66 inches right here. That doesn't look right at all. And I'm looking at a lot of pictures, and that's the way I see a lot of images on Google and all of lights mounted way down below, lower than the door. I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking more like way up here. It just seems so weird to have a light eye level. Maybe I'm not thinking correctly. Our last house, the light was well up above the door and that looked even better to me. But Tiffany and I have talked and we talked about like this general location right here, but oh, I'm definitely not doing that right there. That just seems, that seems crazy. That's the kind of stuff that drives me nuts. So I'm thinking 76 inches sounds better to the dead center. The light will still be kind of low here. You got to keep in mind the door is actually going to be about right here once it gets trimmed in. So let's go with 76, I guess. Hope I don't regret this. Now I gotta remember we got door trim sticking out here. I want some gap in between for lap siding to go around. Probably. And then I gotta go double check on studs inside too. You can waste a lot of time on little things like this. You really can. Let's see if I have a stud in there. Then I have to go double check the other door too because you don't want to get this one perfect. Go down to the other door and realize there's a stud in the way and you can't match them up. I like symmetry. All right, good to go. All right, we're in luck. It'll work. All right. All right, so I've got my hole drilled up big enough for these little wire clamps that come with this box. I'll put it through, let it stick out the back side. And now our box is, well, perfectly centered on the mark that we made. So let me attach it. All right, so the beautiful thing about this is, now this box is actually heavily screwed to the wall. The light is mounting to this. I noticed the majority of the outside lights come with a bracket that bolts right here, and then it's got a, all kinds of different adjustments in it for you centering your light up. But now this is mounted to the wall. This will not, the light will not be mounted to the plastic piece. And since we have trimmed the plastic piece out, just perfectly, check that out. Now we can seal this to the house, although I don't expect any moisture here. And when I mount the light, it mounts to the box, but it looks and appears as if it's mounting to the plastic. Now you're probably wondering why on earth are you going through all this trouble? Why do you care about this plastic piece? Well, now I get a nice beautiful edge to butt my lap siding up to, or I can trim around with some hardy trim, playing around with a couple ideas there. This also comes with a snap-on trim ring, which I think this is more for if you were doing vinyl siding. But I've seen people not even use this ring online and uh, it just further in and out. So I've got lots of different options here, but it's a nice clean look. That's why I like this. I cannot stand when a light is, if you've got lap siding here and somebody just sticks a light on there and caulks the joint, that does not look good to me. That's how our last house was and that always kind of bothered me. Plus your lights never, 
never perfect. Now it's going to be perfectly flat, attached to this half inch side, not going anywhere, and has a nice clean finish look right here with this piece. All right, so we'll get this nice and centered up here. I'll use some of these like flathead roofing nails, just like we did on the exterior boxes. I shouldn't need many to go in here. All right, so it's about time to wrap this episode up. I got a chuckle earlier. I was talking with somebody on Facebook, and by the way, I forget to tell y'all, I post these videos on YouTube. I make them for YouTube, but we've started a Facebook account, so I'll post it over there. So some people may be watching on Facebook thinking that's the only platform that we have. We're actually starting these videos on YouTube, then a few days later, they wind up on Facebook. But uh, I had to laugh. I read his comment. Hey, love the channel, love everything you're doing, love the tips, blah, 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 learning so much. But I'm starting to get really burnt out with electrical episodes. You know what I told that guy? I told him I agree with him. I'm starting to get pretty burnt out myself. <laughs> so, sadly, there is going to still be a couple more electrical episodes. I'm at a point in my life right now 
to where like today I was only able to come out here and work for, it's probably only been an hour and a half, two hours. Yesterday I was only able to work a couple hours putting up those, uh, you know, lamp boxes and everything else. So believe it or not, I spent hours and hours and hours driving around today. Went through to six or seven different businesses, um, hardware stores, things like that, including one business that does nothing but plumbing and electrical. That is all they do. And I couldn't find um, outlet boxes, couldn't find single and double gang boxes at any of these places, by the way, none. And I still need some. And guess what else I couldn't find? Simple 12-2 Romex wire. I needed more. Finally, hitting the last store that I went to before I was about to turn around and just drive to another town, I found one roll. I, now, I will back up and say, one place I stopped at, the price they gave me, they had no prepackaged rolls. They were just pulling it off a spool. They said they couldn't even get prepackaged rolls right now. $300 is what they wanted for 250 foot of Romex. I was buying it for $142 for the same footage at Lowe's. Lowe's has now went up too. Luckily, my local Ace Hardware had one roll for about the same price as Lowe's, took care of me, thank goodness. It's just crazy, y'all. I'll tell y'all this, I'm not rambling, I'm not complaining really so much as updating y'all because a lot of people um, are looking to build a house, looking to build a pole barn house, or are currently in construction. They're looking for information from me on what's going on out there in the world right now. And electrical is getting worse and worse by the day. I've actually been on the phone with uh, a licensed contractor today, Casey, over at Henderson's How To and Review. Appreciate all the time you've spent with me. Uh, been on the phone with my inspector today, trying to find ways to wire a sub panel or extra panel outside. One, I can't find big enough panels for inside. I'm running out of spaces. Two, outside, um, it's just crazy, the prices I'm finding. Like for example, one 200 amp breaker today, one, it was like almost $190 for a, a single 200 amp breaker. I like to throw up, but I found a, a way to do a cheaper, smaller outdoor sub panel with a 100 amp breaker and it was like 70, 80 bucks. I mean, it's just, you gotta shop around without a doubt. So let me quit rambling on there, but electrical's tough right now. Guess what else is tough? HVAC. I don't even know if the guys are showing up this week. I'm trying to get y'all an HVAC episode. They can't get boots right now. They can't get certain size pipes. They're trying to scramble an order together so they can come out and start on the house. They're struggling. They are really struggling to get their jobs done because materials just don't exist. It's always something. It's always something. So, let me shut up. I've started up here in the attic. I've got all the receptacles ran. Sadly, I need to put, I'm probably gonna put a triple gang box here because I got so much wiring to do in here. Some 12, three to run over to that switch over there. I've got, already got two wires in here now. Need to run two more. Gotta power these lights. So I'm trying to find either a double or triple gang box. Struck out today, can't do it. Um, then we'll get that wired up. I need to finish running the wire up in here to these lights. We'll catch that on another episode. And then as I mentioned earlier, we got those outside boxes knocked out. So electrical is coming to an end other than a sub panel, a little bit of AC wiring for the HVAC unit, generator plug, things like that. So we're getting there, we're getting there. Bear with me, I know these are getting so monotonous, so boring, you're sick and tired of electrical episodes. Me too, siding and HVAC's coming. We'll move on to something a little more enjoyable. Thank y'all so much for watching. Truly do appreciate the support. We'll catch you on the next video.